Check. No Katrina Madewell today, Pat. No Katrina Madewell. This is Charlie Oaks uh, sitting in for her along with uh, with uh, Adam and Leo. And we have we had uh, Brian Gloss stay by for a little while because we wanted to get a little bit more into this whole mini dumpster thing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So we, how did how did off the off the air off the air we asked him how many dead bodies he had, <laughs> he had found in the, in those and he said he couldn't say. Yeah, it's it's that's I can't tell. So what's the most uh, other than the dead bodies? What's the most interesting thing that you've found in one of these dumpsters? Ooh, this is this is this is G, rated G. PG. Yeah, yeah, this is yes. this is G. Yeah, this, this is, is G. This is G. This is G. You can describe things, but then we got to go to PG, and I got to put threat, threatening, or violence, or scare. But it's October, so we can get away with that. Yes. So, so it's G. It's okay. G. Yeah. A dresser. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be someone dressing? No, no. Just oh, okay. like you know, a dresser yeah. full of toys. <laughs> just a dresser full of toys. Fair enough. It, it, it had. DVDs okay. and, and toys. <laughs> and <laughs> and oh, gotcha. There and they, they were colorful. <laughs> Very, and the crazy thing was, <laughs> was the size of the underwear. <laughs> <laughs> It, I'm not even lying. Oh, wow. Like, it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Good. That's a great start to the 9 o'clock hour, by the way. I hope I hope, I hope everybody that's listening now is listening at the end of 8 so that yeah. they're not just surprised by, uh, you know, giant uh, underwear coming out of the, uh, yeah, that had to be the radio of, now. That had to be kind of shocking nah, when, it was, when you found it was. out. Wow. So what do you do with the dumpsters? Do you just take them to the city dump on your own, or you guys have a space of your own where you're, you're... So we have a space of our own. We bring it back, and like the whole idea behind it is to really get into the recycling game, because that's oh, where wow. the future's going. You Reduce, know what I'm reuse, saying? Reuse, yeah. recycle. It is, and it's really, you know, this next generation of people, these millennials, and they're really big into that. Mm -hmm. And so if we're really going to, like, cater to that market it's it really i think it's important to I, I think we don't have a choice yeah and by 2050 yeah. if we don't drastically change the way we're living there won't be a place to live on i watched that same special too <laughs> <laughs> it's number nine in the u.s right yes. now uh so <laughs> question though for you so on your dumpsters do you have um do you have them where they're just recycling specific or do you have it split where they can kind of toss it one or the other or you do the sorting yourself so right now we're not really recycling as much because it's it's expensive mm -hmm. it really is you don't so get 15 cents a, a bottle no no <laughs> no no i think that's michigan and california <laughs> yeah. yeah it tells you right on the bottle or the can what what states give you how yeah. much like yeah. i'm tempted to load up my car with all this these these cans and go to a state that gives me 10 cents as opposed to five cents yeah do we get five cents here? We don't get anything here. That's, that's what I thought. We're, we, we are recycling out of the kindness of our own hearts in the fact that we don't want more landfill mountains around us. Because those Good are the point. only mountains you get around here. Oh, I grew up in Oregon where they do, where they do pay you for uh, bottles, but not broken bottles that have been thrown. Wow. Oregon, now that's I missed. Oregon's on there too, isn't yeah, there? it? Yeah, Oregon's is. on the can yeah, too. Always, always. Well, Michigan, Oregon, and California. Yeah. Now here's something you got to remember about these places that do to give you back money when you recycle. They're not giving you back money. They're charging you extra for the privilege of buying it, and you get the money back that you paid extra. So it's almost like you're renting those glass bottles and renting those cans because you're not actually making money because you, you're spending extra to buy it. You're right? making money if you go out and collect them. You're making money if you go yeah. out and collect them, hence the homeless people walking around collecting them. You're also making money if you load up your vehicle and come from another state mm -hmm. where you don't have to pay the deposit. Then, then you can make bank. Are there any <laughs> states near us that even do it? Like I don't think. No, I like, think Georgia does. Do they? I, I, I think I've seen that on them. We'll have to get a we'll have to get yeah. like a, a can we'll of soda or something in the during Mimi? the break and Mimi we have we uh, we, we have, have requests a, we, we have, have a request Mimi we need you to look up what the nearest state is that <laughs> does uh, cash back on deposit for for recycling doing for your hands and doing models. the hard research here doing the hard the, research there no one's listening everybody. no one's listening at all in our production studio that's okay <laughs> we we could have all passed out from carbon monoxide poisoning and they would not notice they were hoping so you know back to back to mini dumpsters and I, every time I read mini this donuts, I'm hoping it says mini, mini donuts, donuts. Back to <laughs> mini donuts back to mini donuts uh so what is uh you know how long can you keep it and do you charge how what do you charge for that like is it yeah. by the What's day the yeah so basically yeah i'll just get I'll, I'll 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 hash out all the details 
We can usually get you a dumpster within the two business days. Okay. Just call. We charge a. We try to keep it simple. We charge a one-time flat rate. It's for five cubic yard bin. It's two hundred sixty-five dollars. Includes everything: delivery, pickup, disposal. That's Pinellas County, West Hillsboro, mm-hmm. and you can keep it for up to fourteen days. Oh wow! Oh, so yeah, it makes it nice and easy. You know, you stick it behind the pod or whatever when you're moving, or you. Got a little kitchen demo. You want to save some money? You do right. the demo yourself. Get some of that. Why are you looking at me? I'm, that. I'm the one that knew what a knuckle boom was. <laughs> don't look at me. Look at that. Oh yeah, you guys change spots. Look That's what that. <laughs> Test dot. <laughs> but That's anyway, fine. I'll write that check. It's okay. It's, I don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then the nice thing about them too is is that they're really you know we use a knuckle boom. Mm-hmm. truck is like a, like a unique little truck that can actually deliver them from the road so we don't even drive on your driveway it's very you nice. know it's great and some people they have nice driveways you don't want to put a, a bin on a, on a, yeah. on a, on a, on a nice driveway. driveway yeah you don't want to stuff. you don't want to no we don't want to be blamed of doing of cracking the driveway that's that's where we're going with this we, we the same thing with the roofers all these cars we don't want to be blamed of doing anything to your driveway Oh, I had I have a funny story for you. When we get to, we can talk about the blame game in a different hour if you want to talk about engineering. I had a client call me this week. I think you're gonna love this one. Uh, let's. Well, we we do have your insurance segment next. We, we talk could. About that yeah. Now? Do you want to talk about the insurance segment real quick? Yeah. Let's do the insurance thing yeah, real quick. Let's do the insurance segment. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, thank you. As uh, Leo's uh, uh, alluding to, this is uh, Adam Talley of Italian Insurance. We're gonna talk about our insurance tip of the week. And, uh, you know, this week, the biggest thing that I've been seeing has been, um, you know, really trying to get out in front of all these mortgagee requests, right? So if you're buying a house, um, you know, insurance is obviously one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle when it comes Mm -hmm. to the mortgage side of things. And it's better to shop early. I'm having a lot of people that are calling, you know, they're calling on a Friday, trying to close the following Friday. And that timeline gets really compressed and then the older the home is uh, the more variables we have on trying to write this thing and then you, you get know? something like delta in the gulf and then you uh, can't write policies uh, at all exactly exactly i mean and we've we've harped on that multiple times but it's uh you know it's shocking um we'll get these people that are buying houses 1960s in a flood zone and they're wanting things to be done you know yesterday and it just doesn't work like that you know especially if we have to go through somebody like citizens eh, forget about it now I'm not telling you to do this if you are buying a brand new house, but if you are buying a brand new house, it's obviously a little bit quicker and uh, less uh, underwriting questions to jump through. Well, speaking of uh, shopping insurance, and uh, we've unfortunately had several several um, clients this week that I wish used you to chop their insurance. Uh, it seems carriers are getting stricter on their underwriting policies and dropping people faster after closing, i.e. roof over 15 years. Oh, yeah. i.e. missing a handrail type thing on, mm-hmm. on a staircase. They're just getting faster at dropping people afterwards. They are. They're trying to get their inspectors out as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, some of them, it's a double-edged sword. You know, they want to make it as easy up front for you to uh, to write the policy, which means they're going to get more business. But, you know, on the flip side of that, if they're not requiring all these four points and everything up front and the agent selling the policy isn't doing, you know, his or hers due, di- uh, due diligence – uh, yeah, you do end up in that situation. Yeah, I just I just wish more people followed what you do and make sure that you're writing the right policy with the right company as opposed to a company that's just going to drop you right after. Well, you know, similar to that, we had a lot of we've had a lot of people as we talked about earlier this summer. Pretty much every carrier in the state has had a rate increase, right? <laughs> so everybody's getting this increase and they want to shop their insurance. And you know, a lot of times we're finding them something less expensive. But I I have to explain to them, hey, listen, you know, they are going to come out and do their own inspection. So. Be honest with me here. How's the roof look? How's the AC doing? But they're now? going in houses now. Oh, yeah. They just go on the outside, but now they're going in they're houses. Got to look under the sink, the water heater, the whole deal. And, uh, you know, so I try to tell people, hey, listen, if you're not, you know, if, if your house isn't in good shape, it's worth it to spend the extra money and not switch the insurance policy because they're going to come out. They're going to cancel. You're going to end up having to spend thousands of dollars to get it fixed anyways because now it's not insurable right so you know the increase might be justified based on you know the condition of your house so think about that before you start shopping and everything so that's all my tips of the week i think i hear some music in the background too 
I didn't hear the music. Did you hear the music? Yeah. Can't hear the music. Okay, Skip, uh, if people want to get in touch with you at uh, Skip's Dumpsters, Skip's Mini Dumpsters, yeah, how do they do that? The, the best way, the easiest way, 877-99-SKIPS, S-K-I-P-S. Or you can order online quick and easy at Skip's Dumpster. That's S-K-I-P-U, S-K-I-P-S-D-U-M-P-S-T-E-R. With no S. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> <laughs> make it nice and confusing for them. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. 877-99-SKIPS. All right, 15 seconds. Okay, good. 877-99-SKIPS. We'll be back in no time at all. Well, good morning. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection here in an exciting two-minute inspection tip of the week. Ooh, love that. I haven't done that in a while. I know. Fire away. Inspection tip of the week. Oh, I have to come up with one. Okay. Let me have a leading question <laughs> that I can run with an well, inspection okay, tip of the so, week. So while you're, while you're doing that, let me tell you the situation that one of my clients called well, me about this week. That's what we were yeah, supposed yeah, to yeah. find out. So he, you know, he wasn't doing any work on his house, but one of his neighbor across the street was getting gas put in okay and the gas line runs through his yard and oh, i don't like where this oh is yeah so when the contractor was digging in the yard they hit the water main so now he has a giant hole in his yard and he's calling me and the he, pat george special the giant pat hole. george special exactly and he called me and he's like well what do i do and i was like well, I mean, you know, I would go after the contractor, but of course the contractor's sure. pointing fingers at the county for giving them, you know, the bad line, and obviously everybody's pointing fingers at each other, and it what a mess, what a mess. So, I mean, you probably see this type of stuff in the field more. What, what, do, you, what do you recommend in this situation? Uh, I told them to go, you know, talk, call the contractor. It depends where they there. hit the water line. If they hit the water line after the, the little box meter thing, you turn the water off, and then you have to actually get a plumber out on your own to fix it. Now, if the water line breaks before the meter, like the street side mm -hmm. of it, you actually have to call the county or city, and they need to send someone out, and they need to fix it. Well, I think they shut off the, the water for the entire neighborhood. That means it was on the street side. So what's normally supposed to happen is you're supposed to call before you dig. It's mm -hmm. 811, Sunshine Locates. You're supposed to call before you do any underground work, and they're supposed to come out and do what's called a utility locate. When they do the utility locate, and you've probably seen it before, these temporary spray paint, uh, blues right. and mm -hmm. yellows and reds and stuff. Red is electric, blue is water, purple is reclaimed, um, different colors, green would be sewage. So you basically, you're not supposed to dig in the area where they're showing you their lines. Yeah, right. so, so that was my question. Did did he not have that done? Well, yeah. that's why they're, they're pointing fingers at each other because, uh, um, you know, they're saying they gave him a bad line. They gave so, him a bad. So they they oh. the contractor was saying that uh, the that the county gave them the wrong line, and that's why they hit the water main, not you know digging where they were thought they were digging. But I don't I don't know how often that uh, that seemed like a real trying to. Well, I mean, play if, the, it's, if, the it's, game. if it's in the street, generally yeah. those those lines would be correct. If it's if it's on your property, because when you get to your property, they do whatever, and it might not be well documented. But on the street side, they should be pretty accurate when they're doing those locates. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that, hey, there's a water meter here. There's probably a water line between point A and point B, which is the next meter, because they tend to run those things in straight lines. Well, and you would think if you're, dig if you're a gas line company, you would think this is a pretty common, like this is yeah. the bread and butter, this is the common practice, but... What, to hit water lines? No. <laughs> Probably. It depends on the company, I suppose. The but dangerous ones that normally get hit all the time are the telecom lines. Yeah. Those are hey, like the I, wild west right. of laying pipe. Leo, wow. I have a question. Uh, yeah. I've watched some of those um, survey guys, and they carry some kind of tube thing in their hand where they pull a trigger, and they're pushing it down toward the road. And it's a foot off the road, but I guess they're looking for the lines. How does that work? Because it looks like it's pretty accurate. The survey people? Yeah, they have uh, looking for lines, and then they spray paint after they find oh, the lines. Oh, that's the, the that's the locate people. Yeah, they 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 have a bunch of tools they use. Sometimes they're just like they're fancy what metal is that detectors. What's that thing called? I don't know. What fancy metal detectors. Yeah. Com. It's a metal detector. <laughs> I mean, is it is it sonar or is it? Yeah, yeah. They, they they can do underground sonar. Yeah, they can do that okay. too. Wow. Yeah, because I would, they're doing something on Linebaugh right now. I don't know if they're getting ready to widen it or whatever. 
Yeah, they here. have this stick. The they find it with one hand, and then they have the other can, which is the spray paint, and they spray it real quick without the constant bending over. And it's important to, when you have a profession like that to have the tools where you're not constantly bending over or stooping down because that's going to hurt your back and that's going to hurt your knees. So they give these people the tools it takes so they can just do it from a fully upright position. Do you think that would lead to a workers' comp claim? Could. And it probably has before. You've got to think, <laughs> all of those professions are heavily unionized. So anything they can do to make their employees' jobs easier and safer, mm -hmm. um, they're going to be pushing pretty hard for. I like how we circled right back to insurance there. You know, I can, I can do it a, a thousand different ways, Pat. You just you line me up. I'll make it happen. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't we talk about title insurance? Title insurance. Let's, let's, let, let's bring Kevin here. into this. Let's bring Kevin Overstreet into this, and let's give Charlie back the full reins of the show. Yeah, Charlie. Fire away with our, your questions for Kevin here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get a word in with you two guys going back and forth all the time. <laughs> They're, they're, they're the guys that dominate the party when you. Uh, this might be the least I ever speak on an interview. <laughs> uh, <laughs> really? Great. So, Kevin, you you are with Insured Title Agency. Tell me tell me what exactly you do. Okay, um, that's one of my businesses. I have uh, six. Uh, they're all real estate related and all in Tampa Bay, um, mm -hmm. Tampa Bay area. Um, insured Title Agency is my longest standing company it's been here since i moved here in um, 2005 so it's um so, you know survived the crisis and all of that uh -huh. and it's um it's, it's a very very well managed and well-run company that is funding the startup of everything else that i'm that i'm working on um i started in the title business in 98 in st louis and started my first company there in 2003 that just skyrocketed in growth it was the seventh largest independent title agency in the midwest in a year so you, you sold no that idea. and came down here or do you yeah sold that um at the perfect time to sell a title company late <laughs> 05 right <laughs> um and but i also bought a huge house at in april of uh two, 2006 and i think the next day the market started crashing yeah so um felt, so, felt like that anyway so i don't invest in properties anymore <laughs> um but um and that company's great it it, um, it's all I need, but uh, it, it's it's not um, exciting to me. Um, I'm, I'm great at it, and my team's great at it and everything, mm -hmm. but I'm 22 years into doing this. So one of, the, um, one of my uh, mindsets or philosophies is with business most, and we can all agree to this, I think most people, they say, all right, I'm, I'm going to be a, a, a mortgage company, for example. Mm -hmm. And in doing a mortgage or mortgages, there are all of these potential landmines. Right. So I'm going to manage those as best I can. And the ones that manage those better are more successful. And that's the way title companies are, too. When I f started my first company, I was, I took what I learned at a, a, a big company that I had a, a great job with. I advanced like crazy. And I just copied it and made it a little, a little better and more expensive. It still worked. But... Uh, the way I am is I, um, I have a hard time focusing in the first place. Right. So, um, focusing on the same thing for a very long time. So when I see problems in, um, such as a real estate transaction, I, I don't just say, let's, let's deal with it and let's try to deal with it better than others. Cause who knows if you can, they may be better at dealing with that. I say, let's change it. So after, um, I guess it was 2014, I started a, um, I called it my laboratory, uh, and it's called Become a Better Agent LLC, or we call it BABA, and we have, uh, we've suspended it because of COVID, but we have um, bi-monthly or sometimes quarterly seminars, very different than any other seminar. Um, I charge no one anything. My partners, my sponsors can't pay. They have to be there and, and provide value to the group. There's about 700 agents in the group, and uh, each event will get 100 to 200 people to come, and it's um, it's quite different. I actually make them raise their hand and say, by by attending a free event, I um, I forfeit the right to be offended <laughs> because I don't tell them what they That's great. I don't tell them what they think they're going to hear. Yeah, and the things that they learn in school, I tell them, look, this is what's going to happen to you. You're going to be a victim of some slick agent doing this to you and your client and here's how to fight that but you know the real stuff on the street so we had 37 main events for that company before we suspended it and i also just didn't have the bandwidth because i'm launching two kind of three um 
never never done before type of businesses. And uh, the, the biggest one is property prequal, and that is um, it's trademarked. We're working on a patent that may not work, but it is, and that's not what I'm going to talk about today. But it is basically a Carfax report for used homes, and it, oh, does, okay. and it does the same thing, and we're right. doing and we're doing it the same way. Carfax is also from Missouri, where I'm from, and I've spoken several times with the founder. He's a genius, but they started by going to dealers. They they had the records for five thousand vehicles, and uh, in the eighties, and they went to the the used car dealers for the, some of those cars. And said, hey, we've got this great report that shows everything, and it'll help you sell more cars than that guy that doesn't do this. They said, well, that sounds great. Then they got some reports and said, wait a second. You're telling, you're making me tell people what's wrong with this car. So get lost. And then Carfax probably knew that would happen. And then they went nuts marketing to the public with the little fox and everything mm -hmm. and saying, um, basically, if you buy a, Carfax, a car without a Carfax report, you're a fool. And if they're trying to sell one without it, they're, they're hiding something. So now you get it when you walk into the dealer. <clears throat> That's the same thing that we're doing uh, with PPQ. Right now we're having agents uh, sign up at no cost whatsoever and they lock in a very low price for the product. And I won't get into the product right now, but um, those who don't sign up, and everyone's going seconds. to be using this. Uh, those who don't sign up will have, they'll have to use it. It helps everyone. I take money from no one. This isn't an open door where people share their commissions with me or anything like that. Okay, Even Kevin, though. we're going to take a quick break here. Okay. And uh, when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll in, in, enlarge on that. But we also want to talk about what you really wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, Okay? Absolutely. We'll be back in a very, very short amount of time here. And uh, we're with Kevin Overstreet of uh, Insured Title Agency. Okay, we're back with Tampa Home Talk. Katrina Madewell is out this week. Uh, not this week, but today. Actually, she was out most of the week. <laughs> but on this show, today. The show's only today. <laughs> Details. I, this, I'm the engineer. <laughs> Attention to detail, my specialty. Oh. And this is Leo Kane over here. <laughs> Barrel engineering and nitpick. <laughs> so we're, we're talking with uh, <clears throat> Kevin Overstreet. And you wanted to wrap up with what you were talking about before and then get into something really interesting. Um, yeah, PPQ is, it's the wave of the future. This is going to revolutionize the real estate industry and truly segregate the, what I believe to be 80% of people that want to do it right and all of the sharks that want to rip each other off. Yeah. Um, so consider that topic closed till next Good. time. Good, okay. So with, um, with Fraudshine State. So this is another thing. Fra Fraudshine State, I like that. Yeah, I made that up in the year 2000. I was helping my title company that I worked for. They promoted me and said, hey, make a national division. I said, I don't know how the hell to do that, but okay. Yeah. And we were looking at different states to expand into because we were in about 20 states in the Midwest. And we're looking at the premiums, and Florida premiums are higher than almost anyone. I'm like, why aren't we going in there? And my ops guy said, well, there's a moratorium on title period in South Florida because of the fraud and lag time in the records, mm -hmm. so we're just not going to do it. And I'm like, crap, they should call it the Fraudshine State, not the yeah. sh Sunshine State. <laughs> so that stuck with me, and that's the name of the book. And the book is, um, I believe it's the first in what's going to be a series on Florida fraud because you could write volumes because we're number one in fraud. We're number we're one. Number yeah. one. We're number one. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody beats us except the fraudsters. Except yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody beats us except us. Nobody, we, we beat ourselves. <laughs> so this is um, um, this is specifically about title fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, the the biggest um, when we're doing a lot of test marketing and things, and the biggest pushback is you're lying. That's not true. Yeah. And it's absolutely true, and it's so remarkably easy. So. Freedom of Information Act in the 60s said, look, any public person can look at public records. But that was going to the courthouse. The person sees you. Right. You look at the records. You may be able to copy them. And that was it. Now, with the advent of the Internet, just about every Florida county, you can see all documents with domestic violence documents as an exception and things like that. But all documents related to real estate, the image, the signatures, everything about it, um, anonymously free and unlimited so what happens is people go in and I, I either choose your house randomly or I don't like you and I want to uh, which I already like you so I wouldn't do that <laughs> um, and I want to harm you so you and your wife could be 
in the house, you've been there for 15 years, you've got a mortgage, you're making your payments, and I simply create a fake deed, which there's multiple websites, you pay 200 bucks a year and they've got every deed from every state. Right. I do a fake deed from you and your signature's on the mortgage and no one double checks it if it's wrong anyway and put myself in title. Then, if you have a mortgage, I simply create a fake satisfaction of mortgage and record that. So, from a title company standpoint, when they go to search this, they're going to see that I own the home free and clear. You are still making your payments to your lender, and there's no red flag. There's no, you don't get something saying, hey, did you sell this? Because you did, because of the deed. Lender doesn't know that their loan has been satisfied. And then I simply, by the judge you, you're probably in a million-dollar house, so I would... <laughs> I could go to any lender, unsuspecting lender, and say something like, my credit's good, um, something like, I'd like to take out a 60% line of credit on this house, because it doesn't require an appraisal. Right. So I can't have an appraiser coming and seeing you and your wife. Yeah. So um, it's done. And I have three hundred, I have $600,000, and I can make the payments on that loan with the money, but I wouldn't. The criminals don't. They just take the money. and. It's remarkably common. So there's two really great stories. One is a gentleman named Matthew Cox, and Google him. He An entire episode of um, American Greed was on him. He'd been on Dateline a couple times. And he, I just met him a few months ago because he got out of prison last July. He did 12 years for multiple types of fraud re regarding property. He targeted, or he affected 109 homes in Ybor City. He single-handedly, and this was uh, 03, 04, 05, so before mm -hmm. the crash, and what was part of the crash, inflated values. Right. He single-handedly took the average value of those homes from 80-something to $300,000 because of some tricks that he used, and they're very simple but um, smart. Okay. And, um, and let's say you don't live there. Let's say you're a snowbird and it's a vacant house. I can take title to it. I need to wait probably three months uh, so that I have seasoning of ownership for the buyer's new lender and so the county, so the, the clerk has the information, the appraiser and tax office have to get that and that takes a few weeks just because of their paperwork. Right. Then I own your home free and clear. I can call a realtor. I can be the only one. I need no accomplices. I call a real estate agent and say, yeah, I bought this home three months ago uh, with cash. They don't source that to make sure I did. And then their due diligence is to look at those three offices that have the information that I've faked. So they order title, and that's basically our due diligence too. So then the seller, who never owned the property, sells it <clears throat> to an unsuspecting buyer. The buyer's title policy is void because it was a fraudulent transfer. Title is very important. Title insurance is very important for a lot of things. But one of the things that really no one knows is obviously when you um, when you sell a proper buy a property, the thing that proves that is the recorded deed. Well, when that deed is recorded, three things happen instantly. One, of course, you become the owner of the property from a public record standpoint. Two, you become a prime target for title fraud because now your information's there, and three, your title policy expires. You have no coverage. Every other type of insurance, the effective date is when coverage begins. Title, the effective date is when it ends. It's super important to protect you against um, claims from the past, but when something like this happens, you don't have a policy. Okay, so how do you protect yourself? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, that's a better segue than I was going to make. So in the book, the book is uh, The Fraud Shine State. Subtitle is Exposing the Epidemic of House Stealing in Florida. And it'll be out within the next few weeks. Uh, we've had to add the Matt Cox story to it. Um, one other quick story is a guy who I can't say his name yet, but he's about to be charged by the state. We caught him at my other title company, Madera Beach, trying to sell 16 stolen properties to one of our investors. And uh, my closer called him, and he laughed at her. Oh, and by the way, he's a licensed real estate broker. He, he laughed at her and said, I'm not hurting anyone, and I'll make you a lot of money. And a lot of people would have said, five grand a property, I'll help you. And he's her golden goose. I would have never known he was a bad guy. <clears throat> um, but she called me and said, what do I do? I said, call Pinellas County. They're going to come in. They won't know what the hell you're talking about. 
but that's how it starts. And then call the FBI. And she gave them everything on a silver platter. And I've spent the last year and a half upset that law enforcement hasn't been doing anything to this guy, and I've been wrong. The two-year investigation on him is about to end. He stole many more properties than we knew about. Um, he stole one last week. He has no idea this is coming. And as soon as the detective's investigation is done, we're going to interview him for the book. And then, and then this guy goes to prison. So there is a way to stop the guy. But to protect your individual home, mm-hmm. which is what everyone mm-hmm. cares about. Yeah, I mean, everybody's afraid now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid. We are, yeah. we are now afraid. Yeah. What do we do? Well, if I had known any of your names, I would have come in with all of the documentation that I can electronically file and spend a few bucks and take your house. Scary. Yeah. So there's, it, it's title monitoring. Title yeah. monitoring is what you need. And there's a few different ways to do it. In the book, like, we're not saying only use my system and everyone else is is not good. I truly want everyone to have some type of title fraud, title protection, because the criminals will move on to something else. Right. This is the fraud shine state. Um, the book is solely focused on Florida, because if we can push them out of Florida, then we can chase them to somewhere else. But so in the book, there's a do-it-yourself guide, very detailed on how to check your own public records. It's enough steps that people aren't going to do it very often. I mean, who would? You want to check it daily. You're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, the second, not second best, second worst, um, is the counties. It's called propertyfraudalert.com. And there are now 13 counties in the state of Florida. The, the Tri-County County area all have it. And you sign up. This is my name. This is my email address. And then every time a document is recorded in that name, so if Kevin Overstreet has a document, which there are five of us in Hillsborough County, which is weird, uh, then I get an email saying this was recorded. It gives me a chance to check it. It's not interactive at all. You can miss the email. You say view document. It doesn't show you the document, but it's free, so why not? There are also... And that you, where, do, where would you go to do that? County appraiser site? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, the county clerk. Okay. Yeah, and they, they have information right there. So I encourage everyone to do that. So what was the what was that again, just for, for everybody that... Uh, yeah, go, so go to your county's um, clerk of the court, okay. to that politician site, mm-hmm. and they, they will have somewhere on there, if, if they're a county participating, that says a little bit about what property fraud is, and here's a way to stop it. But it doesn't stop it. It reacts to it. Right. Yeah, they've already, they've already done it. They're just alerting you, hey, this is happening. They, they've already done it, but they can't... It's red flags to both a smart realtor and a smart title company if they just bought it and they're selling it next week. Right. So they are going to hold it for a little while. So that's somewhat effective. Um, there's this, is, this, this tells them that your pocket has been picked. It doesn't tell them how to prevent your pocket from being picked. Pick, right. yeah. could, it, right. could it help you unpick your pocket? Yeah. Um, just by alerting you, mm-hmm. and, and then you get a lawyer and uh, a quiet title suit when it's not contested, which, of course, it wouldn't be, isn't very expensive, um, three or $4,000, but it, it's a pain. It's um, three or $4,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's not nothing, you know? Yeah. So then there's a, there's a company in South Florida uh, that's an attorney who uh, monitors title for nine ninety nine a month per property. And he's a complete fraud. <laughs> I, I, so the way I, that I check out my uh, competitors, I, be, I become their clients. And he's monitoring four properties for me now. Three of them don't exist. So he's never looked at it. And he's just charging me the $40 a month. He's selling peace of mind but not doing anything. But this isn't a regulated thing. He may have been disbarred for doing title wrong, but he can do this. Um, there's a very, very big company based out of California that's been doing this for a while. And they allegedly have 4 million clients paying them $15 a month. So I like that revenue number. But that's I'm, a good number. I, but I'm their client, and they, they report wrong information often. And again, it's reactive. You have to get the email. So then there are others. But then with my company, it's called Property Firewall, a trademark name. And... So we're putting a digital firewall around the house or around the records to the house. And we do two things that are critical. The first one is the problem is easy access to 30 seconds. So we record a document that is a notice of title fraud monitoring Mm -hmm. and explains that if something happens, we're going to alert law enforcement. And then the second thing is when they get that email that says something new is recorded, we don't just send the email. We force them to say it's legit or it's not let's get into that a little bit more right after the break you got it we'll be right back all right a 
Okay, we are back with Tampa Home Talk. This is Charlie Oaks sitting in for Katrina Madewell this week. And we have um, Kevin Overstreet and uh, getting into some fascinating information here in the last few minutes that we've got. Tell us a little bit more about this company that you've got. Yes. So, um, again, see a problem, try to figure out how to fix it. Title people see a massive amount of fraud and they miss even more because it's been done right. Mm -hmm. And so Property Firewall is the name of the company. You can go to propertyfirewall.com and a lot of information's there. You can sign up for a free 30-day account just to see how it works. But the way that it works is every single month, first Monday of every month, you will get an email that basically says one of two things. Nothing new has been recorded. Great job. Or there's a new document being recorded has been recorded it's attached and you have three buttons green yellow and red green means yeah that was me yellow means i got a question and red means i think there's fraud those yellow and red ones go into a different queue in our system and then we attack those and we have we do have attorneys not our attorneys but people that all over the state will do the quiet title suit to make it go away and 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 that and that's it. The the price is nine ninety five a month for just the monitoring, which I absolutely don't recommend, because then it's just reactive. Yeah, this is uh, somebody picked your pocket. Yeah. Yeah, already it's already happened. Yeah. Okay. What else do you have? Um, the other packages. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the next one is uh, it's one forty nine a month or a year. I wish it was a month. And it in- <laughs> and 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 the big difference is it includes the placement of the notice of title fraud monitoring in the public records so as they're looking and saying okay i got i got to satisfy this mortgage here's the deed that i need to make to get it from this guy this is the fraud guy yeah and they'll say what is this oh this property is being monitored against what i'm doing so i'll go to one of the other thousand homes in this subdivision or whatever <laughs> it's 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 just a shield Yep. Up, up against this, the fraudster. Now, it, how do you? It, it's, so the, how, it's the ADT sign in your front lawn. So how does that? How does that work? That, how does that get recorded? Um, we electronically record it. Um, okay. Yeah. So but how, how do you do it versus like how could how, how come I can't type something up and send it in that says I'm monitoring this? You know, get off my lawn. <laughs> you can. Uh, <laughs> you can. You would, you would be infringing on our intellectual property, and you'd be committing fraud. Or maybe not. You could say this is being monitored and use the do-it-yourself system Mm -hmm. to monitor it. Look at it once a month or whatever. Um, So you always get the email at the first Monday of the month. Mm -hmm. And um, they all go in our system. If they're green, we just send them. That's it. If if there's a new document, it goes into a queue where the people have uh, 24 hours to respond. And if they don't, then we are all over them making sure they got it because emails get missed or lost all the time or ignored, making sure they got it, making sure they understand it and forcing them to answer the question, was this a document that you did or not? And if it's not, then we go to work figuring out what happened. And if, if it's not your document and you're going to end up in a quiet title suit, we actually pay in, the, in that system in that uh, membership level, up to $10,000 for the legal fees to fight it. And that is always enough to fight a um, fraudulent document, unless the person that prepared it shows up and can prove it was them, which they absolutely can't. So so the big difference is, and, and again, I love the other companies, except, except the guy that's ripping everybody off. But the big um, message is, do all of them if you can. Understand how to do the do-it-yourself. Sign up for the property fraud alert through the county if it's available. And then also hire us or hire, um, you know, the other big company that I feel is inferior, but they're massive. Um, and then and then you have, I got this call during the, during the writing of the book, and the editor was blown away by the content, and she was scared because she's a homeowner, and she's like, but in this book you're talking about all of these bad things why does the reader, why should the reader trust you? And I said, they shouldn't. They don't know me. There's no real trust in this world. And since they shouldn't trust me, I am a trustworthy person. I'm honest, but that's what a liar would say too. (laughs) So since they shouldn't trust me, hire me and then double check, get the thing from the county. It's free. Look at it on your own. Make sure we recorded the document, you know, however you want to do it because you need to be, vetting you know long term the people that are helping you 
So um, uh, again, do property fraud alert. Do, uh, I'm sorry, that's my competitor. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess not a competitor because they don't charge money. I think the counties pay them for the service, and it's it's pretty good. But I know an absolutely foolproof way around it that I'm never going to disclose to anyone. <clears throat> but my goal is not. My goal is to make money doing this and helping people and, and advance mm -hmm. the company. But my real goal, my motivation is for title fraud to stop. I mean, this is my industry. It's all I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And this is a massive, massive problem in it. And I believe I'm the guy that's going to spearhead the elimination of it. And that's a great thing for everyone. Okay, so you have the basic package. Mm -hmm. And how much is that? Nine ninety nine a month. Nine ninety nine a month. And then the upgraded is... 149, 149 a year we have to do it for a year because we're going to record that notice yeah. and that notice is good for a year it's like a deck page right um but uh, i don't think i mentioned this on the air the biggest um the biggest difference between title insurance and really all other types and this is why people think we're lying is your title insurance ends the moment you own your home so typically when you say effective date of an insurance policy homeowners or whatever that's when it begins and it's good for a year or something like that. Right. The effective date of a title policy is exactly to the day, minute, day, hour, minute, and second that the deed is recorded. If you look at a policy, it's going to say exactly what the deed says. That's the end of the coverage period. Okay. Is there a package beyond this one? Um, <coughs> there, there's not. Um, there's a possibility that if I'm, I'm speaking with some big underwriters, next week mm -hmm. and what i'd love to be able to do is get them and the state to approve us being the only title monitoring company for florida and me being a, a, the guy because i'm kind of an expert kind of um <laughs> the guy that helps them root out the people that are that are ripping people off mm -hmm. but um the uh it, it could they could potentially reduce the cost of title insurance because you're buying a house that's been monitored all the way up to the point that you're buying it. So why do you need a full po a full price policy? So there could have some effects like that. I'm not sure yet, but um, my underwriters who have great re relationships with they're very thrilled to learn more about it. Okay, Kevin, we're about out of time. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> How do people get in touch with you? They can call me at eight one three five zero four nine seven zero eight. They can email me at kevin at kevinoverstreet.com. And they can also, of course, go to the, uh, to the property firewall website. And they can always go to Insured Title Agency uh, to place title orders and all of that because that pays for all these other launching businesses. Okay, and the book comes out soon? Well, it was. It, I wrote it two years ago. Or I dictated it two years ago. Okay, we got to wrap it up. It comes out as soon as we're done with it because okay. uh, we're adding things to it. But I'll okay, keep you posted. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Absolutely. Thank you. It's been wonderful sitting in here today with you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. Awesome. The Thanks, preceding Kevin. program was paid.